Yeah, I was quite an anxious child, always on edge, waiting for something bad to happen because that's what I lived. I went on to the internet and started looking for painless ways to die on the internet. I had that period in my life where I was doing nothing and I found purpose through my struggle. Welcome to Inspire, the show that tells you the story of how they did it so that you can do it too. Today we're talking about mental illness. It's something that we don't speak about enough and I'm thankfully joined by Natasha Benjamin who has suffered from a mental illness and she's going to share her story with us. Natasha, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Tell me a little bit about your story and what you went through. What, it, what, what kind of mental illness did you have? So I had PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and that was um, from an experience of living with domestic violence as a child. Um, I lived in a home with my mum and um, we lived with vi um, domestic violence every day from the age of six years old until I was 12. What kind of things did you see on a daily basis? What, what were you put through? So um, it was a stepfather. Um, he would just take out his anger on um, both of us. Um, if he'd had a bad day, um, me and my mum would just be at home, you know, chilling, relaxing, and he'd come through the door angry at something and he'd smash something and we'd just be ready for what was going to happen next and he'd just start a fight on my mum. I would get involved because I didn't like to see that, so then it would just carry on until until something made it stop. What did that do to you as a person inside? Were you living in constant fear? Yeah, I was a very anxious child, um, always on edge. And that's something that um, I, I lived with up until my adult um, age. So yeah, I was a, quite an anxious child, always on edge, waiting for something bad to happen because that's what I lived. Um, I also was quite a depressive child um, and I also self-harmed as a child as well um, but that was in the form of overeating so I was really overweight as a child because right. um, because that was the only th thing that I had to do um, I didn't hang out with friends or anything like that I was just at home with my mum and I would just eat. So did you feel that you could talk about it with your friends or your family or was no. it something that you and your mum kept kind of in your house? Yeah it was kept in the house. I didn't tell anyone at school because I was afraid of being judged and because um, I was overweight um, I was bullied so I didn't want anybody to know about what was going on at home in case they teased me for it um, and also I was scared that if I said anything I would probably get into trouble at home mm -hmm. so I just kept it kept it to myself. And how about your, your mum? Uh, did she not encourage you or did you guys not talk about perhaps seeking help from outside or was it or was she scared herself in that situation? I think she was scared in that situation as well. Um, I, I used to say to her, I don't like him, why are you with him? You mm. know, he's horrible to us, but um, it just kind of went in one ear and out the other because I think a lot with a lot of women that are with a violent man, they um, it's past um, love and it's fear and mm. she just didn't know how to get out of there. I think she felt trapped by everything going on. And how long did this last for? Um, from, say, six years. So I was six years old till I was 12 and um, we had an incident, a really horrible incident happened with the violence where um, I was locked in my bedroom. He um, took my mum into their room and they, our rooms were next door to each other and he um, basically beat her up until um, she was essentially just a pulp and um, I, don't I don't know how I got out of my room because I was locked in there but I did and um, the police were called and um, I just remember that morning the police came and we just ran out of there with our clothes on our backs and we just never went back again. And where did you go? We went to stay with a friend, one of my mum's friends. And what happened from there? Um, what happened from there was we were just living with this friend while um, my mum was sorting out um, what we could do next, somewhere for us to live. And um, But she had a lot of trauma, a lot of mental health problems as a result of it, and she tried to commit suicide. And as a result of that, I got put into um, care and while she was taken into hospital to be looked after. And how did that make you feel at the time? Do you remember back to those six months? Yeah, 
it was it was really sad because I remember um, you know we had no phones and emails back then so we used to write letters to each other and um, it, it was just a real um, I think it, it was real confusing time um, you know my mum's somewhere I'm somewhere and I'm still going to school so when I think back I just think wow how did mm. you even yeah. kind of get through each day with that going on around you um, it, I know it was really hard and of course, you know, you and your mum would have relied on each other so much, obviously, when you guys were in that situation. Yeah. So to be torn apart at such a young age as well must have been quite traumatic for yeah. you. Um, let's talk about what happened as a result. So the mental illness. What were the symptoms that you had? Did you recognise them? Did you know that you were going through uh, post-traumatic stress? as a young child or how, how did you how did you kind of find out what was going on so I didn't have a clue as a child and that's what typically happens when it comes to children that have mental illnesses especially if there's something like a domestic violence in the situation as well because a lot of the help goes towards the parent right. and the child just kind of gets carried along with the process so um, what happened was that I had a breakdown in my adult life um, and that was because um, I didn't deal with any of my issues right. so things kept happening and it was just piling on top of me but I carried on um, just I just carried on coping with it because I didn't know anything else it was you know the only thing I knew was learning to cope and I just yeah. thought this is what you do things get hard and you just carry on until I just couldn't deal with it anymore and I had a breakdown and I was um, then diagnosed with my PTSD, depression, anxiety pa and panic attacks, mm. um, which was, you know, a lot of yeah. things at once. And that's the only time that I'm, my mental illness was recognised and that's the only time I got help. Can you remember back to that day when you had the breakdown? Yeah. Um, what were you doing? I was actually back home at my mum's. Um, staying with her in a, a spare room and at that point I um, was doing nothing, I wasn't working, I'd completely lost my sense of self. Um, I used to often ask friends, why am I here? I don't know what I'm here for. Um, what am I supposed to do with my life? I'd literally lost myself. But what was it like on a day-to-day -day basis when you were, when you were struggling? What, what would your day be like? Gosh, um, well, I remember, um, well, I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd be in my mum's spare room, sitting there, crying sometimes, sitting there thinking, how the hell did I get here? Mm. Um, blaming myself for a lot of things, feeling guilty. Um, I, I'm a, you know, I'm a girl that likes to do my hair and makeup, but at this point in my life, I'd stopped wearing it. My hair was in knots because I wasn't even brushing my hair. I was wearing the same pair of jogging bottoms every day. I'd lost weight. Um, I was having panic, panic attacks all the time. Um, it was just a battle every single day. Um, when I think back, I just think, God, who was that person? Yeah. Because it's just something that I don't live like anymore. But um, I'd just become a shadow of my former self and I'd um, isolate myself from friends so I wasn't, I'd speak to a few people but it'd be very, um, very little. I wouldn't engage in a conversation about how I was because I didn't want to talk about it. Um, I'd say, how are you? If they'd come back to me and say, how are you? That's the conversation ending. That really? would be the end, yeah. Because it was just too painful. What was I going to say? You know. I, woke up this morning crying, woke, woke up this morning not wanting to be here. It was just not, it just wasn't a good That must have been quite a lonely time then. Yeah, very. Um, you know, I had my mum and my sister around me and thank God for that. But um, yeah, it was, it was very lonely in my head because yeah. it was just me processing the, the thoughts all day. And um, I was watching TV one day and I saw on TV that someone was talking about mental illness. And that's when I thought, oh, you know, maybe this is something that I'm dealing with, um, but still didn't do what I should and, and gone to get the help and support that I needed. Um, I then went on to the internet and was started looking for painless ways to die on the internet because I oh, got okay. to that point. That That's when I knew something was really yeah. bad because I was looking for a way out. Um, I actually came across a web page that said to me, 
instead of killing yourself, why don't you start afresh and change your life from today? Why don't you stop everything that's hurting you, everything that's affecting you and you know, making you feel this way and start afresh? Mm. And to me, that was just something I never even thought about. It was, a, it was like a revelation because I was so caught up with everything going on around me that starting afresh and stopping had never even occurred to me. So I just thought, wow, I, you know, I can change my life. Yeah. I can start again. And, and um, I s slowly started to do that. I had that period in my life where I was doing nothing and I found purpose through my struggle. There will be hard days and you will have days that are better and, and on those better days, um, you know, be proud of yourself for it. Now today you're okay, but do you think, or have you ever gone back there? Have you struggled with it since or do you feel that you've got control of, the, of, of your, your, the, tr the post-traumatic stress? Yeah. Um, that you had, do you think that you now feel comfortable with yourself that you could never let yourself go back there? Yeah, for the most part, I'm, I'm much better now. Um, I, I did go through having antidepressants and CBT and that did help, but what helped me was um, writing, uh, writing all my thoughts and feelings out, that helped me right. to process everything. Um, in terms of, of going back, um, no, um, the, the post-traumatic stress side of things is much better now. I don't go back. I'm no longer um, in, in fear of the things that used to upset me and trigger me. Yeah. Um, depression, no, that's not something I deal with anymore. The only thing that still um, comes to me sometimes is anxiety. Right. And the only reason I know, because I know about mental health a lot more than I used to now, um, that's because it was a behaviour that I'd learnt from such a young age. So it's, take, it's like a lifetime of unlearning to not kind of be anxious and yeah. expect the worst and that kind of thing. But for the most part, I'm much better now. And now you have chosen to give back and you started Free Your Mind. Tell me about that and the work that you do. So Free Your Mind is a childhood domestic violence and mental health support service and the two t go together because um, w one in three children that witness domestic violence will have a mental illness so it's important that we look after the two. Um, we do a lot of workshops, one-to-one -one mentoring, a lot of campaigning because it's something that's just not spoken about enough. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're just out there helping other young people that have been through that same thing to have better, happier futures. And do you find that the work that you do today, does it help you on a daily basis with some of your own struggles? Yeah, absolutely, because um, every day I learn something more about mental illness and mental yeah. health. And um, I feel like I'm doing something positive in my life. You know, I had that period in my life where I was doing nothing and I found purpose through my struggle. So um, yeah, it's given me something to, to live for and kind of give back from my experience because yeah. now we help other young people that have lived with um, domestic, children that have lived with domestic right. violence. So I'm helping them to not have the same experience that I did and you know, have a happy future before you reach breakdown and yeah. all those sort of things. And how long has Free Your Mind been going? Um, it started in 2013. Wow. Yeah, we've Good. come a long way. And how easy is it, or how difficult rather, is it to actually spot mental illness uh, in young people? What c kinds of uh, things should parents, brothers, sisters be looking out for if they think there's someone that perhaps is spending a lot of time in their room? That's yeah. not to say that all teenagers that spend hours in their room uh, suffering with mental illness. Lots of them are playing the computer. Or, That's the you know, thing. Uh, what, what, could, what can they look out for? You're right, because it is that difficult thing, because, mm. you know, I've got a young sister now and she shuts herself off in her room and that's yeah. just because she's on, you know, YouTube or something or playing a computer yeah, game. Yeah. So, um, but there are, there are things, and um, it's like a change in general attitude. Um, if they're quite a happy-go-lucky person, if they've suddenly started to shut down and are not, you know, quite themselves anymore, it, it, that would be a cause for concern. And they usually say, if you have um, been experiencing a lot of negative thoughts and feelings and a change in 
um, how you're feeling about yourself and it's been going on for a, about two weeks, then that's a cause for concern and you should definitely get help. So it's generally um, if a person has just changed overall in the way that they are acting and they might even change the way that they are in appearance they might start putting the effort in and um, just become a lot more withdrawn um, they might be eating less so it's about um, ha habits and um, yeah. things that they've just generally stopped doing that they would normally do I mean being a young person in today's society is difficult enough and you know, I, you know bullying is probably a big part of you know depression as yeah. well in young people which probably isn't recognised, you suffered yourself from bullying. Yeah. Uh, what would you say about that? Oh, it, it's really hard these days because um, social media, you mm. know, it's massive and people can reach out to you from anywhere and say Keyboard anything warriors. about you. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've had that and it's, mm. it's horrible, you know, um, especially if you haven't got um, a very good sense of self-worth yet, that will get into your head and you will take it on board. So it's about, um, you know, Ch putting yourself in positive situations and building your self-esteem, being around people who, um, you know, love you and um, are there for you and care about you so you can build your sense of self-worth. I mean, even though you're, even if you're around positive people, you can only give yourself your sense of self-worth to yourself, you know, that comes from you and um, doing positive things for yourself, looking after yourself. Um, self-caring yeah you know treating yourself and saying nice things to yourself um it's all those little things that will help you build your self-esteem so things like that when it's ha when it's said to you you won't even take it on board because you'll know that if someone's bullying you it's more about them yeah. it's more of an issue that they have with themselves than it really is about you and what do you think about medication because some people don't want to take antidepressants, some people do. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about it? Um, well, it's an interesting one with this because um, I remember being offered um, antidepressants and I didn't take them at first because I was scared of them. And, and then when I, um, I started to feel like I was really struggling, I took them. And if I'm honest, um, they do take away your sense of being, um, I remember feeling quite uh, like a, a zombie, if I'm honest. Um, I, I, I wasn't myself when I was on them because they, um, they sort of numb your senses. Um, so, you know, of, of course I didn't feel anxious anymore. Of course I didn't feel certain things because all my, you know, a lot of things were um, kind of numbed down because yeah. of the yeah. antidepressants. So um, I'd say they help, but if you can, um, find another way then I would recommend that um, however you know there are some really really severe mental illnesses that do require yeah um, that's right yeah that do require you to take something so you know it's it's about kind of working out what's right for yeah, you yeah 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 uh, and lots of people recommend uh, keeping fit you know kind yeah. of keeping trying to keep fit and healthy really and exercise is good exactly. if you're suffering from uh, depression or, yeah. or mental illness as well. Self-care is really important. Mm. It's about you know um, doing things that you enjoy, um, going for walks, exercise, mm. um, music. If you you know draw upon that, um, if you like art, if you like writing, it's about having a channel that when mm. you feel like you're getting stressed, that you can tune into that and offload. And to someone that is going through treatment now or maybe is at the start of a mental illness or perhaps recognizing it yeah. what would you say to them what kind of messages would you want to put out to them because you can overcome it absolutely you can overcome it um i guess um i, I would say that i i know how it feels it's 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 horrible it's hard but um if you can just draw upon you know the things that make you feel good being around people that make you feel good people that are nice to you um, and you be good to yourself um, you know however long it takes you do what you can to get through it and you, you just don't give up um, yeah that's what I'd say you just don't give up and you keep going and um, there will be hard days and you will have days that are better and, and on those better days um, you know be proud of yourself for it and on those 
bad days, don't kick yourself for it. Just know that good days will come again and you just carry on through. Thank you so much for telling your story. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> If you are worried about mental illness or worried about somebody else that might be dealing with it, there's lots of help and support out there for you. You can find help and support at Free Your Mind and our website is www.freeyourmindcic.com.